Welcome back, everybody. My name is Tim, and this is another Real Ideal Gear Review. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Red Star Bullhead Chronograph. This is a watch that you can get on AliExpress, and it's a watch that has all kinds of great dressy features. It has some tooly features, and we're going to talk more about this watch and find out what the real identity of this watch is and go through the five things I typically go through, which are size, fitment, finish, accuracy, and then legibility and loom. So let's get started with size. So this watch is about 42 millimeters in diameter across the case and 15 millimeters tall. This makes this watch a chunky watch. This is a watch that you're going to have to be careful of when it comes down to just the profile of this watch on your wrist, bumping into things, um, when it comes down to work, if, you're, if you choose to wear this to work. Um, just the kind of work that you do as far as a high profile watch is concerned. So it's a heavier watch. It has a lot of steel to it with the metal bracelet that comes with it. It comes with a bracelet and a leather strap, but with a metal bracelet, it's going to be a heavier watch. When I bought this watch, I was more interested in the leather strap and the color of the leather strap with the dial and everything else. So this is not something that I really was really interested in the, in the bracelet um, being worn with this watch. So Kind of a dive watch, but on the heavier side of dive watches, that 15 millimeters, if you compare this to other dive watches, this would be a dive watch that would be in that 300 meter dive rating class and up. So it's a thicker watch. Also, the case on this watch is kind of angled in, a case that shapes towards the bezel and the bezel comes back out from there. It is a fixed bezel as well because it's a tachometer bezel. And uh, so it's just an interesting case design with, with a lot of steel, a lot of height. Uh, 42 millimeters is on the wider side of things, but for people with average or above average sized wrists, it should be a great fit for you. If you're in that small wrist category, I would be very cautious about this watch to start with. So there's the size. On the Fitment side, um, I haven't sized the metal bracelet up, so I don't know for sure how that's going to work. I know it has micro adjusts, and I know that it has a uh, pin removal, uh, pin link removal um, system on there. So it's it's really easy to do the the adjusting on there. Um, but as far as the Fitment goes, the leather brace, the leather strap did a great job. Um, I think the positioning of the holes on the leather strap gives you enough adjustment, fine adjustment, so that it works for you uh, from that perspective. Um, but overall fitment of this watch is great. It's a heavy, top heavy watch. So be careful of that with the leather strap. If you have the bracelet on, it should be a little bit better. Should have a little more counterbalance to it with the weight. But the overall fitment of this watch I think is good. So let's get down to finish. And this is where this watch really, really shines. When you look at this watch, you might think chronograph, tool watch, tachymeter bezel. Um, it's got some polish to it. So it might be on the, on the more polished side or the more dressy side of a chronograph. But this watch, I think, really ends up being more of a dressy watch, dress watch, than a tool watch. And I'll give you the explanation as to why. But let's first get into the dial. The dial is great. So it's that Fume dial uh, approach to this, uh, to the dial itself. You've got the square uh, chronograph subdials, which I really like the contrast of shapes, the squares within a circle. They're the smaller square, like it's not big squares inside the dial, they're small squares. So I think just the artistic piece of the contrast there is really good. And those subdials are black with uh, the white uh, markers on them, with the white hand on them uh, for the subdials. So the dial itself I think is fantastic. Uh, the, the quality of the hands is awesome. White hands, hour hand, minute hand. The chronograph second hand, which is that large red Red hand is tapered from the counterbalance side all the way to the very tip on the opposite side. Great design, I think, for the for the uh, second chronograph hand. The running second hand is in the six o'clock position, and the total time elapsed on the chronograph is at the twelve o'clock position, as far as the subdials go. So that part, I think, just the overall layout of the dial is great. The indices are applied; they're white high contrast. Um, the polished case is half polished, so the top half of the mid case on up is polished, and the mid case on down to the bottom side is going to be brushed. The crown on this is great. It's easy to grab. It's a manual wind, so you pull it out to adjust the time and that's it. Um, and then you have the pushers for the stopwatch or the chronograph, which operate great. Those are high polished as well. So to, to me, the finish of this whole watch lends itself more and more towards the dress side of things. Accuracy. 
not an issue at all with accuracy. It's well within specs. Um, it is a manual wind, so you got to keep it wound every day or every other day. Go in there and wind it, and uh, just be cautious not to overwind a manual wind watch. I think most people know that, but just as a reminder, this is a manual wind watch. The display case back on the back is cool. I didn't mention that in the finishing aspect, but with this manual wind uh, ST1901 movement, which is a Seagull movement, uh, it's just it's fun to watch. I think everybody who owns one appreciates that and it's it's a great thing to see a lot of moving parts way more parts than the modern versions of these uh, semi or semi automatic <laughs> automatic movements or manual wind movements where you can see the uh, the open case back so just a cool cool uh, uh, movement to watch uh, on the back side it has a gooseneck regulator on it so if you do have to regulate the watch it should be easier to regulate so let's talk about legibility and loom legibility great I mean, this is one of the one of the reasons why I bought this one versus the bronze brown version. The contrast is much better. I'll put pictures up there for both. The hands on the dials, especially the sub dials, I think are better. It's easier to see the markings on the sub dials. Uh, the indices, I think, just stand out better. Um, so I, there's just something about this particular colorway I think is just awesome when it comes down to legibility. So legibility is great. Um, loom. It's a surprise. I was surprised how good the loom was. It lasts a few hours for sure. Is it all night? No, it's not an all night loom setup. But it's a lot, a lot longer than I thought it would be because the more I look at and wear this watch, the more I realize it's more of a dress watch and dress watches tend to have poor loom. Does it last three or four hours? I don't think so. I mean, I woke up, it was like two hours after I'd gone to sleep, um, and I could see the hands pretty well with my glasses on. The indices actually outlast the hands when it comes down to loom. So overall, the loom on this is pretty good. This is a surprise when it comes down to loom. Okay, let's go over the positives and negatives. The positives, there's a whole list of positives. Take a look at this. What you have is a dial, a dial that's awesome. It's just a beautiful color. You've got the black sub dials with the white markers and and hands on there. I think that everything in here just really goes together well in a black leather strap. The cohesion of the whole design around these different colors and the, the patterns and the contrast of square versus circle and and the white hands and the red you know second chronograph hand I, these are just all great features for this watch um, the crown and pushers i think are done really well keep in mind that they're at the 12 o'clock position so we're going to talk about that in a second as far as the downside to that the tapered upper case i think it's just a nice touch another cool feature to this watch so when you look at this watch it's full of different design features it has a working chronograph the time on it it, it, it measures time really well i don't wear these watches long enough to really be concerned about accuracy over the long term so to me that's a lower concern unless there is a, a clear thing in the time grapher which this one doesn't have that says hey you got to regulate this watch right now because they usually don't get better they usually get worse all right what about the negatives mineral crystal 15 millimeters tall and you've got the crown and the pushers at the 12 o'clock, basically 11, 12, and one o'clock positions. All right, so this is the recipe that takes this watch out of the tool category because this is the area I think a crown is most exposed is at the 12 o'clock, one o'clock position, the pushers at the one o'clock position as well. There's just a lot of potential for banging into things. This is the edge of your wrist. So the difference between this position and the three o'clock position is your hand. Uh, if you're left hand, if you put it on your left hand, your hand is there covering the crown basically um, at the three o'clock position. But there is no coverage by your body um, when it comes down to the position at the twelve o'clock. It, it drops off. The watch drops off over your wrist. So that's just something to keep in mind. This is to me a, a sensitive thing, which means this is definitely not a, a tool watch for work. Could you use this for outdoor activities? Maybe. Um, 50 meters of water resistance is is adequate for most water situations except for you know longer submersions in water or pressure uh, any, any type of significant pressure I think you got to be cautious about that but to me this is not a work watch I don't think this is really that outdoorsy type watch this is really more of that indoor casual office setting um, it's a great conversation piece I've already had people ask me about it because they look at the crown and the pushers and they say well, what I didn't know they could put those there. And so you talk a little bit about the bullhead design and just where it came from, and, and they're just impressed with that. So I think it's it's a great conversation piece, but it's not really in that activity zone. It's more in that display zone or that, that dressy zone when it comes down to it. So the uses for this, I think initially you look at this and say, 
Well, this has kind of the outdoor features to it, minus the mineral crystal, which by the way, it should have a sapphire crystal. At this price, it should be a sapphire crystal, no doubt about it. But it's a mineral crystal, which is baffling to me because other watches far less than this have a sapphire crystal. So to me, that's a big ding. But I think this goes in that, like Casio is kind of transformed the G-Shock from that, that tool, uh, practical, um, uh, just, kind of industrial looking thing into a more sleek design slimmer look to it which is kind of that royal royal oak ap kind of look i think this is along the same categories you think it's a tool watch but the more you look at it, it's like man this is more of a dress watch than it is a tool watch so you kind of have to force yourself away from that tool side into the dressy watch side it comes with a bracelet and a leather strap so if you like the metal look you can put the bracelet on you're going to have more metal uh, it just complements the steel case uh, as well for me, it's the leather, I think, and this is a little bit more of the dress side of it too. Um, the leather complements the dial, and it also just forces you to, to look at this as more of a dress watch. Overall score for this is a 9.3 out of 10. There's just some design features about this I think could have been tweaked. The mineral crystal really bothers me, especially at this price. Um, so to me, that's, that's a ding. And if you're gonna go loom like this, go all out on the loom and really make it happen. I'm a loom nut, so I, I when, when companies or watches that are designed have loom on it, you need to have the loom on it. There you go, there's the review for this watch. Uh, it is the Red Star Bullhead Chronograph. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. If you wanna buy it, I'll put the link where I got it from AliExpress on the video's description. And uh, from there, have fun with this watch. I think it's a great watch. It's a highly recommend watch. Just use it as it is designed, not for what you think it's designed for. My name is Tim, this is another Real Ideal Gear Review. And we'll catch you guys next time. Push it back in, it's a push, pull, crown. Push it back in, and push it back in, it's a push, pull, crown. Push it back in, and push it back in, it's a push, pull, crown. Push it back in.